What's going on, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with another team review. This time, because of the brand new Flash event for Red Stars, I figured I would get this one out of the way. This is going to be a team review for the Wakandans. Now, as you may know from previous reviews, what I intend on doing is looking at the characters from three different perspectives. The first will be availability, the second will be usefulness, and the third will be their breakpoints, uh, what investments you are going to require to get the max or minimum value you can out of this team. Uh, as of right now, in case I've never said it before, whenever I show off the team, especially in gameplay, this is the positioning that I prefer, not to say it is the absolute best positioning in all situations, but overall this is how I tend to position all of my characters, and going backward and forward anytime you watch a review, this is how you will see what I recommend when it comes to positioning. Additionally, as mentioned previously, I will go over any tier fours that are required, not only for individual characters, but for entire teams as a whole in order for them to be complete. Uh, and that will, of course, go into their overall rating, depending on what the tier fours do for them, how many they require, and whether the end result of that much investment gives you something worth your time. So going straight into it, we'll do a quick blitz fight, and we'll discuss their availability. Now, the Wakandans are not an early game team. They are probably best classified as a mid-game or mid-to-late game team, mainly because they're not accessible incredibly early. Uh, two of the characters are in stores, that being Killmonger in the raid store, and M'Baku in the arena store, but they are not that high a priority, so while you can work on those two characters relatively early, they're not that important. Plus, raid store characters in the early game are very hard to farm, you don't have that many raid credits, and the ones you do tend to be working towards characters that unlock something. Now, uh, Black Panther and Okoye are both node farmable, however, Black Panther is at the end of the Cosmic Campaign, and Okoye is a little bit further out than most players under the level of 50 are going to reach, so with that in mind, it is unlikely that you're going to be target farming any of these characters, completely ignoring the fact that Shuri is a legendary character that requires five unique Spider-Verse characters to unlock. The Flash event that's coming up only requires four of them at four star, so you should be able to get some progress in this event without worrying about unlocking Shuri, but until you do have her, you are pretty hard stopped at the fourth event. Their availability in the early game through things like orbs, not many of the core characters, with the exception of Black Panther and Killmonger have too much value in the entire game. Killmonger is a mercenary character that can help you for the mercenary flash event for gold. Black Panther is a mystic character with a pretty decent kit as well as a brawler, so you can get a little value if you unlock them early, but Okoye and M'Baku are not particularly good at what they do outside of their team, so if you do happen to unlock them, I wouldn't worry too much. Just get them high enough that you can use them for the event. And now, we talked about how they're available, let's talk about their usefulness. The Wakandans as a team didn't have much usefulness up until now. Now, they, when they came out about a year ago from the time of this video, they were widely uh, panned for being advertised as one of the best raid teams, or as a raid team, Apex raid team even. Uh, Fox Next kind of oversold a little bit on that, and while they are a good raid team, the investment required to get them to the point where they can do what teams like the BKT and Fury Shield and even the Defenders can do at less uh, investment, less gear, less tier fours, wasn't really worth it. So they kind of fell by the wayside for a while with a very few key components. The Wakandans serve a very great purpose in war. They are a phenomenal offense or defense team, especially if they are defending a room that is buffed by security. They are very quick, they do a lot of early burst damage, and that can definitely be terrifying if you're going into a fight with an entire team that's defense down. Additionally, they are a good global team, so if you do happen to have them, you shouldn't have too much of a problem in any nodes that require global characters, but since they are a mix of heroes and villains, 
not many of the campaigns really take full advantage of that. Uh, individually, as we've mentioned just a little bit ago, there are some value in some of the characters. For example, Killmonger is a phenomenal single target damage dealer with self-sustain that is also a mercenary, so you can get a lot of use out of a Killmonger depending on how early you get him and how much you invest in him. Black Panther is a mystic brawler character and up until the creation of the Supernatural team was one of the best options for completing the mythic campaign based exclusively on the fact that his slow on basic was very very likely to hit even without tier fours and shuri is probably at the time of this video one of the best all-around raid characters because of a couple of not reworks but tweaks that her kit had especially when it came down to the text allowing it so that not only wakandans but any character who reaches under 50 percent health gets a number of deflects placed on them. She has a very good heal when invested in. She uh, offers a defense up with a little bit of energy to an entire team, more obviously with the Wakandans, and even though her basic doesn't do much damage, it does put a heal block on a key target, which allows her to kind of mitigate some of the problems from characters like CM, Captain Marvel, or... Uh, Ms. Marvel if she's about to heal or anyone who has the opportunity to gain life when you're really trying to work them down. She's also a pretty decent choice going into both Dark Dimension 2 and Dark Dimension 3 and as most legendaries tend to be a little bit more powerful than the average tune, you can imagine that any investment in Shuri will be well worth it. Outside of pretty much the situational uses they have, there really are only going to matter for the Red Star Flash event, uh, which is a little bit underwhelming, but it's better than nothing, I guess. So if you kind of look at it like that, the way the Red Star Flash event is going to work, um, it's going to be a little bit of a segue, I guess. The first day you can do it, uh, you're going to have the opportunity to do three fights. Uh, first, second, and third. It doesn't matter how strong your team is, you can only ever progress three times as the these flash events only have three attempts. So if you're trying to make sure you maximize your value, you want to make sure you get to a three-star version of the team as quickly as you can. As again, Shuri will not be necessary for the Wakandan team until the five-star unlock because it's impossible to unlock her at less than five. So on this first pass, you can definitely get up to three with the Wakandans that you should or could have access to. Somewhere in between on the next pass, you may see a Shuri event, uh, and that will be great because that allows you to potentially do four, five, and six, getting more both silver and gold promotion credits that you can use to work on your characters. Uh, after that, it's going to be a little bit of a hike to go from six to seven. That's a lot of character shards. And more importantly, you have to wait for Shuri's event to come around again. So it stands to reason that getting to about five or six is probably the stop point for most players in the Red Stars. But as you progress and build out your team, probably not as high a priority as some of the other options, you will be able to get more Red Star credits. And think about it in the exact same way that you treat the hand team for the Catalyst event, or that you treat the city characters for the block party event, or that you treat the mercs for the gold event. It's something to work on, but it should never ever be a priority. You should always be working on building out your roster to accomplish other tasks as you eventually complete five, six, and seven starred versions of the characters, the reward for doing so will be getting slightly more gold, slightly more materials that will add up over time, but nowhere near the amount of value it's going to cost to target those characters versus what you would lose by working on alternate teams for war or alternate teams for raids or just good teams in general. No one's really going out of their way to work on the hand. And that's pretty much it for the usefulness of this team. Uh, obviously, the more investment that you put into them, the better they'll be. That's true of most things, but the problem is, as we go now into breakpoints, they don't really work well at low investment. So the biggest issue with the Wakandans when they came out, and even to this day, is that there was a couple of changes to kits before release, specifically Okoye uh, and Killmonger, 
that kind of changed what they do. Okoye used to always assist. Killmonger used to just do or claim to just do more damage on basic all the time. And they were kind of a team where they were just constantly taking additional turns and they were just so quick. That's why they were supposed to be good at raids. Turns out that was kind of changed. Okoye now only assists when she has a charge. She only gains a charge when either Shuri gives it to her from using her special or if a different Wakandan crits. The Wakandans don't have a phenomenal base crit chance and there's nothing really that makes them crit more except, of course, Killmonger. So she's not assisting nearly as much. M'Baku is in a weird space. He's a very good soak tank in that he can take a lot of hits and kind of shrug them off. But when it comes to damage or general survivability, it kind of times a little bit off. Uh, Killmonger is great, but you don't start seeing the dividends from the value until he's doing quite a bit of damage on all of his attacks, which of course require a large investment. Black Panther is also very similar. While obviously he can take a lot of turns with tier fours, he doesn't quite do a lot of damage unless he has charges, and you really don't have the way to control the number of charges he has. Of course, shy of one ability that Shuri has, so he doesn't hurt that much. And Shuri, while a great all-around raid healer uh, and an energy battery for her team, she doesn't quite hit the mark when it comes to being the, the missing piece of this team. Her heal does cleanse afterwards, and until you put a lot into them, she doesn't actually heal that much. That said, the breakpoints for the Wakandans are very weird. A Wakandan team at about 150k or 30k per character, uh, which usually would be around gear tier 10, 5 star or so, maybe 6664, perhaps a tier 4 here or there. Well, they're not going to do much. They're actually going to do a little bit worse than most other teams at that level, especially in the places you intend on using them, like raids, or raids, or raids. In war, they'll be adequate, but they won't quite uh, be commanding, and a lot of that comes down to just the bare minimums they require for investment. So until this team reaches about, not exaggerating, 250 to 300k, you're not going to start seeing what all the fuss is about for the team. Uh, they might be adequate enough to do the fights that are required for the Flash event, but ultimately, as a capstone team, if you don't happen to have high red stars, a lot of investment, and a lot of tier fours, you're in a bad spot. Uh, real quick, I do want to touch upon tier fours, and I'll start with M'Baku. Uh, there are some tier fours that improve his kit overall, mostly just his passive. Uh, he doesn't actually do a lot of damage in general, so any of the abilities he has that kind of tweaks his damage helps a little, but that's not kind of what he's there for. Uh, also, as a note, gaining two charged instead of one charge and two counters definitely. This could help him be a tank, but... Ultimately, I don't think M'Baku gets too much out of any Tier 4 investment unless you are truly trying to max out this team. Okoye is a little bit different, mostly because Spear Strike is kind of the most important part of her kit, specifically the ability to clear a positive effect. And if you're trying to take off pesky taunts or death proofs or use her assist the way it's supposed to be used, uh, you don't quite get as much unless you have the extra focus because it does actually propagate to her assist. Uh, another kind of note is the difference of speed bar change on her ultimate. Uh, it can be that she doesn't really do much damage overall. It can hit, uh, but it doesn't uh, overcome her power level. For example, if she's fighting a character that's 20k stronger than her this is not going to feel even though it is piercing damage as damaging as it would be to fight a character weaker than her uh, the speed bar change is probably one of the most important pieces of this ability kit uh, and that's why it, it might be worth investing in but again because it's 
she doesn't do much without it. It's required, but you don't get a lot out of it anyway. And the kind of same thing goes with Precision Strike. It just slightly increases the damage. And Dora Milaje just slightly increases her overall piercing. It's good, but investing in just damage on characters that aren't amazing at damage tends to feel a little bit lackluster. Uh, Killmonger is one of those characters that needs a lot of tier four investment to fully find where he's supposed to be. It He is a damage dealer and his sustain comes from his damage. So at the very least, seeing higher damage numbers on his basic, his special, bringing it to a total of 600% damage or 200% three times. And even his ultimate, which will do quite a bit of damage and chain to every single target as opposed to just five, which, let's face it, there's very infrequently going to be that many characters, and if so, you don't really control who they hit, so five is almost as good as all, and sometimes it might be a little better, especially if the chain kind of runs in a circle, but it is an increased damage, and since that's how his kit is designed to work, it's great. Retribution plus 70% damage whenever you know, he gains defense up. Important, because he needs to get that damage out. But again, without it, you'll start noticing he's not actually doing damage. Uh, Black Panther, I think without saying, Defender of Wakanda is probably the most important Tier 4 investment he can get. Uh, the difference between almost taking an extra turn and taking an extra turn on a brawler, mystic character whose entire kit is based on doing that, especially on the Brawler's team with Ms. Marvel, where you're just constantly getting additional attacks, or on the Wakandan team, where you might call an assist from Shuri. A huge, uh, huge difference. It's the difference between sometimes going quicker and always taking an immediate extra turn, especially in a situation where there are quite a bit of summons. Um, when you look at abilities like Panther Rush, it doesn't do much damage, but it does help him feed his extra turns. Even when you uh, ignore this investment or invest in it, it doesn't feel like a great use of the investment. It still will help, but not much. Hunter Spirit just actually does no damage ever. 40% uh, more of zero is still roughly zero. Claw Slash going from always apply slow is probably incredibly important. For my money though, I don't really feel like putting tier fours to go from 90% to 100% on a chance to apply slow, especially because of resist checks and he doesn't have great focus to begin with. Uh, and of course, Shuri. Uh, independently of this team, Wakanda Forever and Kamoyo Healing are probably the most mandatory abilities on any legendary character, especially because she is a support character who is a healer whose job is to succeed in raids, making sure that she applies speed up not only to herself, but any Wakanda that may be on the team. On turn, guaranteed healing the most injured ally for 10% of her health, and uh, you know a little bit more if she has a charge. Anytime she gains defense up, she gains an ability energy, which means her special will always give her an energy. And in raids, self and any ally dropping below 50% max health gains 3 deflect, which probably will be enough to sustain them long enough for her to get a heal if it comes up. Uh, as for Kamoyo healing, since uh, not only is it just a small amount of healing, but it adds an entire additional step, so she heals a total of 5 times, the stronger she is overall, the higher gear tier, the higher her health, the more uh, insane this heal becomes, so it's a very important step. If it was just the 250 healing, obviously it wouldn't matter, but because you get a whole extra 15% of her health heal, it can be the difference between full healing your entire team or missing out on one character, keeping them a little bit too low, and them losing out. So independently, those two abilities, both on her team and off her team, are amazing. Instant upgrade and Vibranium Gauntlets probably are only worth looking at on the Wakandan team as instant upgrade only adds one random Wakandan ally energy and it does not count her. I'm going to repeat that. It does not count her. She always gains her energy from her attack. She can't gain another one from this ability if she's the only Wakandan. So it's really only important if you are using her on the Wakanda team. And even then, is it that important? That's for you to decide. 
because this team without tier fours is incredibly lackluster when it comes to damage and survivability and then with tier fours doesn't really break out into anything uh this team gets a little bit of a negative outlook like they're they're they can't be compared to teams that uh grow and become stronger with tier fours they do become stronger but that level they hit when compared to character teams like the defenders or uh sinister six they they don't really break into uh, the upper echelon of gameplay they don't become the best version of any kind of team they're just another team that needs tier fours doesn't benefit from tier fours if that makes sense looking at them from their usability it is kind of unfortunate that they are so necessary for something like red star progression because you're not going to get too much use out of them granted if you do invest if you do put one two or even three tier four ability upgrades into each of them you will find use out of them as you can clearly see i have quite a bit of investment in these characters and i still use them to complete any global node or any node that says wakandan on a raid i can do u6 easily however that's kind of unfortunate considering previous to them i was using a much weaker version of the bkt uh, even my defenders at 250k were able to do what they could do somehow quicker uh, at the investment point so when you kind of look at all of the pieces they are not very available uh, in the early game they become available in in the mid game but you still have to kind of target them uh, their usefulness is a very big up they are necessary for at least one very important facet of the game now but outside of that they kind of have tributaries where they can be used but they're not necessarily the best at anything for that and their breakpoints are incredibly high where you have to invest so much in them that ultimately you're probably better off just working on a completely different team or two with the amount of resources you have to put into this team to get them to kind of balance out that said if you were lucky with very high red stars on characters like black panther shuri killmonger orokoye or even mbaku you might be able to justify a very large investment in them and then use them as a very good war offense or defense team of course depending on where the defense downs are uh because of all that though they are the first team that i have to give a overall b rating to when it comes to teams they are useful but they're not as useful as the defenders and they're fun but not at any point where you're going to feel it early like when you just unlock this team you're not immediately going to feel great i can now accomplish tasks so it's my first B team. Uh, I feel bad about giving it to them because I do enjoy using them, but I also have to admit that the reason I enjoy using them so much is that I went out of my way to invest in them over time to obviously max them out as far as stars. And while I do get independent value out of characters like Shuri and Killmonger for their respective events, and while I clearly am ready for the Red Star event, I can't help but feel I regret some if not most of the investment i placed in these characters that's pretty much it now if you guys don't mind i'd like you to comment below let me know what your wakandans look like or how much fun you might be having with them what you're using them for just so i can get a uh, understanding of whether or not other people have the same opinion as me or if they're if i'm not missing something maybe uh i don't know i just wish they were a little bit better i wish that something changed in one of them, maybe a Koye constantly assisting any Wakandan character. This way you can get a little bit of value. Maybe Black Panther getting a little bit more damage on his attacks based on something. Or maybe Baku actually learning how to do damage. One of these things has to kind of give for this team to kind of break out until that point. They're my first B-rated team. Uh, they need quite a bit. If you're a new player... Or a mid-game player they're a team you could work on but they probably won't be as rewarding as anything else 
Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you at my next video. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli, and I'll catch you later.